I think the last time I was here, I said something to the effect of like a tale of our time has kind of like universal themes mm -hmm. that kind of transcend time too. Um, but as my second time coming back, I'd also like to say it, there has to be a, an, an element of contemporality to it. Mm. It has to be kind of contemporary to where we are in our moment and like what media and what mediums grab us right now too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tales of Our Time. This is a show where we discuss the stories that move us, what makes them so meaningful, and why others could or should find meaning in them as well. This is not a spoiler-free show, so bear that in mind as you continue to listen. We tackle books, movies, comics, and more. Where there is a story, there is a reason to read or play, like today's. I am not alone in studio, of course. I am joined by my returning guest, Jerry Friesen. Hi, thanks for having me back. I just realized I started, I paused because mm -hmm. it was me realizing that actually you did do a video game. Yeah. The last time that you were here. I'm kind of becoming the video game <laughs> touchstone. I, right. I, I apologize. I've not tried to turn you into like the video game boy. We'll find like a book or a movie or something next time. Right, in the future. Yeah. We can like, <laughs> you could branch out if you want to go yeah. to other mediums. I swear I do other things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I also like to play video games a lot. Mm. I realize they might even be a little bit overrepresented on this podcast. Mm. Like, I do think there there's like an element to that. It's like, that's not how a lot of people are consuming narratives. Like, mm -hmm. they've become a lot more of a storytelling device than... Maybe people first thought of when they were creating Pong. Yeah, I think people have really kind of underestimated how powerful, like, an interactive story that you have a direct part in could be. Yeah, it's it's very good. I also skipped over, is there anything you want to say to introduce yourself? <laughs> I've just left it at the video game guy. Uh I'm also an English teacher here in Taiwan, too. I right. uh, just had my four-year anniversary of living in Taiwan. Congratulations. Thank you. I also probably get a little too hoity-toity about this, too, because my majors were in creative writing and a minor in art history. But it's fun to get to, like, flex that. Mm -hmm. And plumbing the depths of things, even, like, video games is just kind of a reflex sometimes, too. It's perfect for this show. So, like, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I'm really glad that mm -hmm. you were willing to come back on the show again of to course. talk about... the story you have for us today i know it's in the title but i hate mm -hmm. to say it first i have brought santa monica studios god of war 2018 reboot sequel it's tricky i think it's technically god of war number four so this is actually even though we are doing god of war this is actually going to be the first of a two-parter so jared told me that he wanted to talk about god of war four and while we were talking about it, we realized the best way to really understand why it stands as a tale of our time is to kind of have like a base understanding of the first trilogy and the way that that informs the events of the fourth game. And so we did originally try to put that into one episode, but just as we kept going, like our opinions on it and kind of the discussion that came out of that. It, it was just like too good to keep to one episode. It was too good to keep to two minutes. So we've decided to split this into two. So this first part is going to be us kind of discussing the events of the first God of War trilogy. So if you missed them, you will get kind of filled in on it. If you have a passing experience, like this might be a good reminder for you. And if you've played them, you can hear kind of maybe revisit those thoughts, kind of remember back where we were in the uh, early 2000s <laughs> when those came out. So that's what this episode is going to kind of be. Next week, we're going to catch up on the actual events of God of War 4. But we will do a little bit of foreshadowing and kind of tying events here and there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think is there anything else you want to add about kind of what to expect? I think it's very key to say we are both people who have not played the original trilogy. I think I've played bits and pieces here and there on like a friend's PlayStation way back in the day, but yeah. never like the full games of them too. And I don't mm -hmm. think you've played them either. No, I I mm -hmm. was actually vehemently against them mm -hmm. until four. Mm -hmm. So that that's also an opinion that like 
Now, I think it has changed a little bit. Like I've matured, mm-hmm. but I I was not into them. I did a lot of reading about them. It's not the same thing though. Yeah, they were kind of a phenomenon at the time mm. and very geared towards the typical like early 2000s like presumed audience of video games. And like since then, I think video games has grown to be like more inclusive, more considerate of like the entirety of their audience, not just edgy early 2000s white male gamer guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there were a lot of us there. Yeah. And also we've all grown past, I would like to think we've all grown past who we were in the early 2000s. (laughs) Our style of humor is matured a lot. A lot of edge. Our humor, our drama, we've we've dulled those edges in a a good way, in a good Mm -hmm. safe way. So um, I guess let's get into it. Let's uh, let's kind of talk a little bit more about what that entails. While I am passingly familiar with like God of War 1 to 3, that's really because I was playing video games in the 90s. I did not like them at all. At that time, I really wanted to work in the video game industry. So I was very disappointed by how the, the way that that narrative treated its female characters a very will, good example of like fridging i will agree like that it is god of war 4 is in a complicated place because it is softly rebooting while like continuing a franchise from 2005 mm. and this is kind of where i wanted to softly say like maybe it should also be like a slight content warning too because mm. the original god of war games if you're going to go back and look those up listeners is of the era of like 2005 the like extremism but like extreme with like an extra guitar riff on it yeah. too meow, meow. two x's like it was the protagonist of- is yeah. um the protagonist is kratos mm. a spartan mm-hmm. who has two jagged swords chained to his wrists mm. that are on fire <laughs> as he goes around killing all the gods and greek myths mm-hmm with the ashes of his dead wife and daughter on him. Which, it, like, technically, I guess that's at the end of the first game. That's yeah, right before the start of the first game. It was right before. Okay, I, okay. so mm-hmm. I was right, because that's what I remember about the series, mm-hmm. is it was, like, right off the gate. Like, mm-hmm. we used to have a wife and daughter, but now they're dead, and my skin is white with their ashes. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, that's honestly the fastest I've ever seen female characters get out of the picture and into the backstory. While I sleep <laughs> around with numerous unnamed women... <laughs> And I'm just really a cruel, mean character. He like, was. Well, it's also, I guess, I, I could also take the moment to recognize, like, the place of those games was kind of to be, like, a big power trip. Mm-hmm. And, like, in that they were very successful, right? Because there's also recognizing, well, we can hold games accountable or or media, like, broadly mm-hmm. accountable for the things that they might say accidentally or, like, the mm-hmm. undertext, undertone, the undertones that they have. I think it's also a place to like recognize what they were trying to do. And like, it's true that they were, it, it was supposed to be like a power trip. Mm-hmm. So, and and they did do that. It was a big, like, you're strong. You could kill the gods with your own bare hands kind of thing. Yeah. And it, it really relished in the spectacle of that kind of violence too. I mean, the fourth one does too, but like with all of that said and done, it is really in a lot of ways narratively divorced well, I, how, say, I don't want to say divorced, I'm gonna informed say, by. I'm going to push back on that point. Yeah. I think God of War 2018 is an interesting place because it is not a reboot. They don't wipe the slate clean. In yeah. fact, it's very much one of the themes of the story is like the slate is not clean. Um, They are thoroughly connected to the material yeah. and they treat it all as canon. Mm-hmm. Everything happened. And now about one or two decades later, Kratos is a very very old man well an older like middle-aged man he seems to be about like in his 50s yeah in his 50s like that's a good read on his age still built like a greek statue i think and he's also still a god so like age is Mm -hmm. kind of nebulous too like they really know they don't give us any information Mm -hmm. as to like is he immortal we don't know but he has aged so he seems about 50 so he is middle-aged late in his life and very much these games are in conversation with the past of who he was and the question of who he is now, especially mm. now that he has a son, we find out. I love that. But that's kind of getting into like what we're going to talk more about next time with like the actual events of God of War 4. Yeah, so, yeah I'm going to steer us back a little bit and um, ask you, can you give us an overview of what happens? Because it's three games. The only thing that I remember, like in terms of if I were to give a summary of it, is mm. that at the end of it, all the Greek gods are dead. Yeah. I think starting that 
zooming narrative flyby is Kratos starts as a Spartan general who mm. in losing a war he's currently engaged in pledges his soul to Ares, the god of war. Mm-hmm. Title drop. Yeah. Then <laughs> Ares gives him the strength to defeat his enemies and also tricks him into killing his own family to make him a more perfect servant. Kratos doesn't like that and goes on a rampage of revenge guided by the goddess Athena who mm-hmm. also doesn't like how Ares is trying to take over the world. Yeah. At the end of the first game, you kill the god of war. Ares. Yes, and trying to end your own life after the oh. tragedy of your existence without your wife and child. Mm. The Progressive. gods save you and elevate you into the new god of war. Mm-hmm. Game two, you start as a god of war, but you are still just settling all your old grudges in life and being a terrible god of war. Like a, a terrible as in like very vindictive, very cruel. Very cruel, uncaring, just waging war to wage war. Okay. And Zeus tries to take your powers away and in the opening act kills you. So Kratos fights his way back out of the underworld mm. and kills the fates to go back in time to save his own life. Does it. And Athena gets killed trying to save Zeus though and reveals that Zeus is his dad. Dun, dun, dun. Zeus is Kratos' dad. Yes. Okay. At the end of that, you team up with the Titans to go attack Olympus hmm. to finally finish this once and for all in God of War 3. Spoiler alert, you finish it once and for all in God of War 3 mm. by finishing off every last god on Olympus. Yeah. And Kratos ends it by killing Zeus. And then you open Pandora's box and, and Athena is dead, but not dead and trying to take over the world. But bottom line is Greece is ruined and there are no gods left. And your revenge is complete, hooray, question mark. So when you say that Greece is in ruins, what you used for me was like, at, because I think this is evocative and mm-hmm. also kind of like the imagery I feel like lends itself to then like the contrasting imagery of the mm-hmm. next game. Like he kills Poseidon and then the seas flood the world, mm-hmm. the Greek world, I guess. He kills Helios and the sun goes dark. Yeah. So it, it, mm-hmm. it is like he kind of ends the world through his revenge scheme. Yeah. He ends the Greek world through his revenge scheme. Mm-hmm. And, it, and then it just ends there. Essentially, yeah. I guess to our understanding. As our understanding, like, or the world is never the same, but he has caused immense amounts of harm mm. and irreparable damage. Mm-hmm. All for very selfish means. They kind of semi-justify it in very, like, Edgy early two thousands ways too. They killed my family. It's they for betrayed revenge, me. right? Yeah, so it's all for revenge. Selfish question mm-hmm. mark. At this point, I think in the conversation we would say yes. Yes, because he doesn't really. Hmm. I would say yes. I would also say like the Greek gods do suck. I, mm-hmm. I love Greek mythology. They all suck. Everybody there's bad. Yes, but, um, but like maybe not in the world bad. Like no, in the world to kill them badly. It but is what he does is bad. he is as bad or necessarily worse. To end that stuff. Yeah. He kind Uh, of participates in that cycle. Yeah. And again, the games want you to enjoy that. So they kind of create that tone of this kind of violence being acceptable and fun. Because the game itself, the mechanics of playing God of War, the early trilogy, is it's a combo, like hash and slash, beat them up. Mm. You go through rooms of enemies and try to keep your combo up so like times 50 times 60 without getting hit like that's the core thing just a button masher Mm. and it kind of kratos kind of embodies that relentless like just overwhelming rage and button mashing personality too yeah they kind of become the same thing like the mechanics beget the story yeah and the story is enhanced by the mechanics yes for sure um i think to kind of close this one out like i I just Mm. have two questions and um, the first question is, since we've done this, we kind of have a, like a little short recap before we get into it further. What themes from the first God of War trilogy do you think are revisited in God of War 4? Mm-hmm. I and think... Then, oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. What themes do you think are revisited in God of War 4? I think the themes that are revisited in re-examined are, of course, violence. And the role of like a person's choices in harming others. Mm. Like, because there are consequences when gods do things in these worlds. Mm -hmm. And the ownership for that responsibility, where does that fall? Are you willing to assume it? Mm -hmm. And I think the second thing is also familial relationships, which 
were not as in depthly were not as explored in depth in the first one. They were just shocking elements of the plot too. Yeah. And so I guess to close out then, what made you pick up God of War four when mm-hmm. like we both professed we didn't we didn't play one through three. So what had changed your mind about God of War four? What made you want to pick that up? The tone seems so different and thoughtful. And the play style seems so radically different from the old games. Mm-hmm. It was closer to a Dark Souls type game where combat's very slowed and considered. Like you have to fight a few enemies who are very fast and maybe you are not as fast as them where you have to wait and dodge as opposed to just mashing buttons. Mm. But Kratos is also older. He's also protecting someone else. So seeing all these contrasts between the hyper-violence and enjoyment of like the first game versus this very reflective and more mature tone in the fourth game is really compelling. That's what drew me to it. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I, I think that's really true too. I guess we don't have time to explore it here, but I think there is irony as well in it shifting from Greek mythology to Norse mythology, which I, I bring up because Norse mythology is a mythology and a a group of stories that is like held together by great warriors fighting and like the idea of Valhalla, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of like rich stuff there, but we don't have time for that. And um, we're, or rather we have time for that next week. Yeah. So that's kind of what we'll be getting into then. I hope everyone here enjoyed the first part of our two-parter series on God of War 4. And I hope to see you next week as we continue our conversation. We'll see you next time.